this Tuesday with President Trump scheduled to speak that morning. As you'd expect, the assembled international bureaucrats, diplomats and plutocrats are hardly his biggest fans. Just before our election day, a top UN official said this, quote, If Donald Trump is elected, I think it's without any doubt that he would be dangerous from an international point of view. Without any doubt, eh? Aren't these permanent bureaucrats supposed to be politically neutral? What a joke. Well, if he is a threat to anything, let's hope the president is a threat to the pompous, self-regarding, bloated, wasteful and, above all, corrupt swamp on New York's East River. The United Nations is tonight's Swamp Watch. The UN is a sprawling international bureaucracy with endless different bodies and agencies. Its executive arm, the Secretariat, has a $5.5 billion budget, 22% of which is funded by you the U.S. taxpayer. So where exactly is your money going? Well, the U.N.'s a global thing, right? So you'd expect a bit of travel. But hundreds of millions of dollars on travel? Just one U.N. agency, the World Health Organization, spent $200 million last year on travel alone. They spent less than half that on fighting AIDS and hepatitis, and even less on malaria, which kills a million people a year, mostly children. But at least when it came to Ebola, no expense was spared for Margaret Chan's accommodations. She's the former World Health Organization's director, and on a trip to Africa in the fight against Ebola, she stayed at our expense in the biggest presidential suite at the Palm Kamayen Hotel in Conakry, Guinea. It cost over $1,000 a night, but hey, it's got great reviews on TripAdvisor. Then there's the case of former UN General Assembly President John Ash. He was charged with taking $1.3 million dollars in bribes from Chinese businessmen to use his official UN position to advance their business interests, including a $500,000 payment for John Ash to push for the construction of a multi-billion dollar UN conference center in China. As John Ash showed, it's a pretty cushy life being a United Nations crony. He had $59,000 worth of hand-tailored suits, two $54,000 Rolexes, and a $30,000 basketball court in his New York home. While these bribes and kickbacks, or just good old-fashioned taxes paid by American workers, are paying for a luxury lifestyle for elite diplomats, staggering levels of waste and fraud end up stealing money from the poorest people in the world, like those in Somalia. Between 2010 and 2013, the UN doled out $260 million through the Common Humanitarian Fund for Somalia, money intended to pay for food, water and medicine. But... According to confidential UN reports obtained by Fox News, much of it was given up front to three local organizations that produced phony receipts, padded invoices, and doctored project reports. Later, the UN's internal oversight body estimated that each of these local outfits engaged in fraud. In fact, as much as 79% of their project funding was phony. And, unbelievably, investigators found evidence that some of the money may have gone to the Islamist terror group Al-Shabaab. In an email, a UN contractor asked a superior for money transfers while writing that another colleague is, quote, pressed by Al-Shabaab to do the three payments as quickly as possible. And by the way, I don't think this kind of fraud is an isolated example. Just last year, its own report across 28 UN organizations found a sense of impunity for fraud perpetrators. More than half of the 16,000 UN staffers surveyed said they believe fraudulent behavior goes unpunished. Remember that when you see all the grandstanding at the UN next week and the endless lectures about how terrible America is. They take money from US taxpayers, use it to fund their luxury lifestyles, and then lecture America on, I don't know, morality and human rights. Just look at the UN Human Rights Council, whose members include such well-known paragons of human rights as Saudi Arabia, where women can't drive, Rwanda, where Human Rights Watch condemns arbitrary detention and torture by the military and police. And Venezuela, where, well, you know about Venezuela. The United Nations Human Rights Council has condemned Israel, a democracy, more than any other nation on earth, including murderous dictatorships like China, Syria, and Iran. And now they're trying to organize a blacklist for any company that does business with Israel. In March, they even passed a resolution on cultural diversity co-sponsored by North Korea. What a farce. With conflict, civil wars, refugee crises and famine around the world, of course there's a need for coordinated humanitarianism. But when that noble mission gets corrupted 
by elite diplomats and bureaucrats more interested in Rolexes and room service than the world's poor, it's time for us to stop writing them blank checks. Let's drain the swamp at the United Nations.